Home prices, both nationwide and at the local level, are really sensitive to macroeconomic news. The chiefs, sorry, the chief of which, at least right now, is the possibility of a recession. Here's NPR's Stacey Vanek Smith reporting from the Economic Super Bowl of 2023. Welcome to the Economic Super Bowl of 2023, where economists face off about where the country is headed. The two teams, Team Recession and Team Soft Landing. At stake, what this year is gonna hold for all of us, our jobs, our finances, our futures. First up, Dana Peterson, Chief Economist at the Conference Board. We have to look at data. I mean, we, we do have these forward-looking indicators and all of them are saying recession. Team recession, that is what Peterson sees in the data right now. But she has a challenger from the University of yes. Michigan, economist Justin Wolfers. You're talking to an economist who is going to be happy and tell you that I see really good things. So are you team soft landing? I'm just Team America. (laughs) He's Team Soft Landing. This channel is about real estate, so let's uh, look a little more closely at the macroeconomic indicators with a more direct bearing on the housing market. My five national macro indicators are the overall economic activity, interest rates, specifically those related to mortgage loans, the volume of mortgage applications, foreclosures, and the nationwide home price indices. First, the overall economy. Conference Board, an economic forecasting consultancy, publishes its broadly used monthly index of leading economic indicators based on 10 measures, which include indicators of manufacturing activity, the labor market, investor and banker sentiments, the yield curve, consumer confidence, and construction of new housing and the verdict is there's going to be a recession this year the chicago fed national activity index is also pretty negative but wait have you seen the latest bls report jobs in january rose by 517,000. job growth was widespread led by gains in leisure and hospitality professional and business services, and healthcare. This job growth is well above the previous 12 months average. Keep in mind that the labor force participation rate is still a full percentage point lower than before the pandemic, even though it has been increasing. Consumer spending is showing signs of strengthening, weak signs of strengthening to be sure, We don't have the January numbers from the Bureau of Labor Analysis, but Bank of America has reported a strong increase in credit and debit card spending in January. Despite the slightly positive news and the fact that some of my economist colleagues think we may even see a continued, if mild, growth this year, in my opinion, a recession is still um, very likely. Monetary tightening works with a lag. According to academic studies, the lag is usually about 18 to 24 months. And if you remember, the eight rounds of monetary tightening started 11 months ago, in March of last year. According to the Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic, it takes businesses and consumers time to recognize and feel and act on changes in financial conditions. So buckle up, America, just in case we have a bumpy ride. Now, since this channel is about real estate markets, a logical question for you to ask is, should I then wait until after a possible storm to buy a house? Well, not necessarily. First, I'm not predicting a storm, just a possibility of a probably mild recession. Second, home prices move a little differently from the rest of the business cycle. Feel free to connect with me or uh, drop me a comment below if you have a specific question. Second, the interest rates. Despite the Fed's plan to continue raising the benchmark rate further, the latest average 30-year fixed rate is at a moderate 6.12%.
that's nearly a one percentage point lower than the high of 7.8 percent in november plus inflation has been cooling for the seventh straight month given these news it's no wonder that the mortgage bankers association has reported spikes in mortgage loan applications in the first several weeks of 2023. Oh yeah, speaking of mortgages, are people falling behind on their mortgage payments? A sharp increase in foreclosures can be a harbinger of a collapse in the housing market. Adam's latest data for the third quarter of 2022 reports a 1% increase from the previous quarter and a massive 167% from a year ago. Okay, no need to panic. I know 167 is a lot, but that's in percent change, which uh, can appear huge if you start with a relatively low number. In terms of levels, in other words, in raw numbers, the foreclosure starts rose to only 67,000 for the entire United States of America. To give you a quick reference point, there were 15 million approved mortgage loans in 2021 alone. Let's zoom out a little. You see this huge spike in foreclosures is still way below the levels we've seen during the great meltdown of 2008. I'll tell you when to panic. You just have to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it when I issue a warning. And finally, while real estate is hyper-local in nature, it still helps to watch the national averages. The Case-Shiller Index is down again for the fifth consecutive time. Redfin is also showing a moderate decline. However, Zillow has remained relatively flat. But just like I said, real estate is hyper-local by nature. So for a meaningful analysis of the housing market trends, we have to look at price changes and other housing market indicators on a local level. My massive data set is specific to Palm Beach County, Florida, and it's granular down to individual listings and home sale transactions. And while price levels here in South Florida may differ from home prices in other parts of the country, the trends or changes in prices are very generalizable to most other markets. So, is this a buyer's or a seller's market? I'm going to do something different this time. I'm going to have the two sides of the market face each other off in a contest based on my five housing market indicators. Let's start with price trends. Here's what's happening with home prices in Palm Beach County right now. Clearly, the trends are, well, anything but clear. <laughs> there is no clear decline nor a rise in home prices, so the score is unchanged. Days on the market measures how quickly homes get snapped up by buyers. And my most recent data for January 2023 show that DOM is down. Actually, quite significantly down. Again, as I explained in my last month video report, the latest DOM is initially downward biased. But still, DOM is very clearly down. Sellers open the score. How many homes were able to sell above the asking price? Not many. We're way down from the pandemic levels. We are in the ninth, ninth month of consecutive drops by this measure. This point definitely goes to buyers. Percent of listings that lowered the original list price. This chart shows a proportion of listings that wanted to push the price and test the market, but then reduce the original list price. And since October 2022, after five months of the post-pandemic back-to-normal hike, fewer listings reduced their initial asking price. Sellers score again. And finally, cash purchases have been surging recently. 
In January 2023, the share of cash purchases was at 56%, or about 8 percentage points higher than in August of 2022. If you're a seller, having more buyers flush with cash is always a boon. Conversely, if you're a buyer, you want your competition to be weak, poor, deficient. Sorry, I just got carried away. So sellers clinched the victory with the final score of three to one. I know, and you know, and I know that you know, and I know that you know that I know, my this scoreboard isn't perfect because there is no theoretical or empirical reason to give equal weights to all indicators. But still, I think it's helpful to visually summarize the five housing market indicators to give you at least a general guide to the most recent trends in the housing market. Well, that's all I had for today. I tried to keep this brief. I'll be back next month. Until then, go to shooters.